the garden is still jumping as another group of ballers pump up the volume. The Friars are ready to rumble in the garden's hardwood. The Blue Jays are bringing their own fly moves. Break it down. So let's step up your game, fellas. Cause you know what time it is. Stop. Have a time. Day two of the Big East Tournament you can't touch this. continues next. You can't touch this. Stop. Big East Tournament time here in New York. Quarterfinal number two on deck from the Big Apple. Brayton and Providence, one of your classic 4v5 matchups. Both these programs look to be headed to the NCAA tournament. Both of them are try to make a late push to improve their standing come selection Sunday. Earlier today, Xavier outscored St. John's by 24 points in the second half as the number one seed moves on to tomorrow's first semifinal, which tips at 6.30 Eastern here on FS1. Their opponent set to be determined. The evening session kicks off at 7 with Villanova and Marquette. Rob Stone, Nick Baugh. Donnie Marshall back here with you as Providence is introduced. And the most important guy for you, Donnie Marshall, for the Friars in this one is who? Well, we talked about Kyron Cartwright, but Rodney Bullock is the guy. He's their leader. I think he he has to be aggressive early in this game, Nick. We know about Kyron. But Bullock at times fades, and not because of his teammates, but because he just doesn't go aggressively get the ball. They have a lot of pieces, but I think if the leadership comes from Bullock early, they're going to be in a good way. I think Cartwright needs to think about getting him shots in transition, pushing it, finding him, and Jalen Lindsey. Providence, in a lot of their wins, their big wins, they loom large from distance. And Bullock and Lindsey can really do damage from that area. I miss my college days. That just looks like a tremendous huddle. Friars, your five seed, 19 and 12 overall, 10 and 8 in conference play. Here comes your four seed, Creighton Blue Jays. Nick, it's a team you are awfully familiar with, but they've got some injury issues coming in to the tournament. Yeah, Ronnie Harrell missed the last two games with a snap infection in his foot. Saw Toby Hagner, he's been dealing with a bum ankle. The freshman Jacob Epperson having some knee issues. So be interested to see what that front line looks like, Donnie, for Creighton, because certainly that's where Providence is going to want to dominate this game on the glass. I'm watching Marcus Foster all game long. This is a game that he can thrive in. He loves the spotlight. Great following. We know that about Creighton fans. But we got Nick Baugh here, so obviously <laughs> they, they have a great fan base. But in all seriousness, Marcus Foster steps up in games like this I expect him to have a huge huge game today Foster the last to be introduced for the Blue Jays as he heads back to the huddle uh, no shortage of dance moves here at the garden we'll see at halftime for the call Justin Kutcher the Jim Jackson Rob, thank you very much. Rob Stone was actually dancing just like that, but you couldn't no, see was. him. He was off camera. <laughs> We're set for quarterfinal game number two. Justin Kutcher alongside Jim Jackson right here. And getting set for this one, these two teams split the season series. Uh, differing styles of play, I think it's safe to say. Well, you know, Creighton wants to get the ball up down the court, shoot a lot of three-point shots, force you to have to guard in transition where Providence is going to pick you apart. They want to be a little bit more physical, but they, too, Love to get out and transition and run. As far as players to watch in this game, there are a couple of studs. Marcus Foster, another first team All Big East performer. Well, first team in, in the way of scoring the basketball. He can beat you in so many different ways. Such a tough guard one on one. It's imperative that the Friars defense close down the driving gaps and force him to be more of a perimeter player. And it just depends. Kyron Cartwright. Which Cartwright shows up? The one that's aggressive. The one that makes plays, the one defensively harasses you, or the one that kind of looks disengaged. Because when he's disengaged, this Providence team is not the same. And it's going to be interesting to see his body work, but his attitude early in the game to see if he's engaged enough to get this Friar team off to a great start. Our starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee Alpha Diallo. He is a guy for Providence who has been their leading scorer during conference play for the Blue Jays, Kyrie Thomas. The Big East Defensive Player of the Year 
This kid, he can D up just about anybody, and he might be Ding up just about anybody in this game. You heard Nick Boss say he'll start against Rodney Bullock. Would not be surprised to see him against Kyron Cartwright. Jumping center, it'll be Jalen Lindsey against Toby Heckner. The officials, James Breeding, Jeff Clark, Tony Chiazza. And Providence wins the tip. It is Kyron Cartwright, an honorable mention, all Big East this year. Malik White, a little handoff here for Cartwright. Cartwright chased now by Thomas, deflected ball. Bullock, the baseline jumper, got it. Rodney Bullock. Conference play, couple points under his season average. Well, how about right on time? Donnie Marshall talked about the importance of Bullock being effective, but I'd like to start oh, inside Kyrie with the mismatch. I like Malik White in the lineup. It gives you another versatile guard that can score, that can penetrate, and you saw in the last play, he made a play for Rodney Bullock. And also what it can do is it can move Cartwright off to play exactly. a two guard. Yep. But it is Thomas right now on Kyron Cartwright. Malik White, shot clock down to six, finds Bullock, shot clock at five, draws a foul against Toby Hedner. Greg McDermott in his eighth year as the head coach for the Creighton Blue Jays. He is second all time at Creighton and wins behind just Dana Altman. He has done a phenomenal job with this program. Uh, one of my favorite coaches. We, we talked earlier about Chris Mack and about the, using the platform to maybe go to a bigger quote-unquote job. Coach Mack had the same opportunity. Could have gone to your alma mater. That's right, but he understood what it meant to be a part of this program, a part of the Creighton community, okay, and how to continue to grow that. And he's one of the favorite coaches just to hang out with, grab a brew, couple of pops, and get, sit back and kick it with. So happy for his success and how he's kind of just really continue to transform this program. Mitch Ballard, all freshman team. Here is Marcus Foster, shot clock down to nine. Davion Mintz got fouled on the way up by Kyron Cartwright. You talk about one of the great guys in Greg McDermott. How about Ed Cooley and the job he has done with the Providence Friars? The most consistent success the program has ever had has been under Ed Cooley. He's talking about keeping it real. He keeps it real 100% with his, with, his, with his players. And I think. These young men respect that so much because he doesn't sh sugarcoat anything. Nothing. When you're right, he's going to pat you in the back. <laughs> when you're wrong, he's going to give you a swift kick, okay? But one thing he does, he supports the man beyond the basketball. You know what I mean? And that's that's what I love about him. He's already making James Breeding laugh over there. Oh, yeah, that's, but that's, that's Ed Cool Cooley. You know what I mean? I, I am happy he's going with a three-piece suit, though, for this, you know, quarterfinal match. Wow. Well, because, I mean, better. that's what I'm used to from him. Okay. Stepping up. I like the no jacket look. Yeah, well, here he took that one off. I know. Out for Diallo. Bullock to the move. He's aggressive early on. like to see that here for the Friars. Mintz trying to push. This is what Creighton does. Foster for three. Got it! Let you in a little secret. Anytime you allow transition offense, <laughs> Debian meant to get deep dribble penetration. When you have shooters on the wing, you're to give up three-point shots. I.e., you got to stop the ball a lot earlier if you're Providence in transition. That's why Kyrie Thomas is such a great defender against a guy like Kyron Cartwright, who's quick. You got Thomas who moves his feet low and has that 6'10 reach. Just block that shot. Skip pass. Thomas goes best half of the top. A lot of people are saying he's a potential first-round pick in the upcoming draft. This, of course, the home floor of the New York Knicks. Not potential. I talked to a lot of scouts when I had the Villanova game there a few weeks back. She jump shot by Bullock. Lindsay, the offensive rebound gets fouled here by Ballard. Right, um, Kyrie Irving, I mean Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Thomas is uh, versatility. But again, no one stops the ball. So Debbie Amin's able to get deep penetration and smartly, Marcus Foster keeps and maintains his spacing, and then the cross-court pass, the poor closeout by Alpha Diallo allows Kyrie Thomas 
to show off, I think, mm -hmm. athleticism that a lot of people don't give him credit for by finishing with a dunk. Jalen Lindsey knocks down the free throw. Lindsey is 75.6% free throw shooter. He has been struggling just 18 total points in his last five games. One of two at the line, and Foster tips it to Hegman. 8-4, Blue Jays leading here, three minutes in. Mintz uses the screen. Thomas posting up against White. Heckner, top of the key three. And a rebound for Malik White. Alpha Diallo from here in New York City. Diallo attacking the hoop. Good job right there by Alpha Diallo, the sophomore. And it was a good job by the Friars. An excellent job here in transition after the made basket by Trader. But back to that Providence last play, the ball didn't stick. He got places side to side, able to get a basket, and then heads up play by Creighton. He got the ball in quickly after a score, pushed it up quick, and now you get a chance for Marcus Foster to make a play. Foster 77.6% at the line, averaging over 20 points per game. The first two-time first-team Big East performer in Creighton Blue Jay history, of course, Doug McDermott, only played in the Big East for one year. Otherwise, he would have been a multi-year first-team performer. How about Marcus Foster? That perception isn't really reality. How people perceived him coming into Creighton to this program because of his past is not the young man that he is today. So give him credit, the coaching staff, for kind of redefining who he is, not just as a player, but more importantly, as a young man moving forward. Providence a chance to tie with a two, take the lead with a three. Diallo for the lead, it's long. Foster with the rebound. Thomas again posting up. Rodney Bullock with the rebound. Cartwright keeps that dribble alive. Switch here, Davion Mintz now on Cartwright. Kyrie Cartwright spinning, wow! How do you keep track of where he was? I mean, you're talking about putting somebody in the spin cycle, and Davion Mintz was right there, but at the end, Cartwright able to separate with some space. Mintz is long with a three, and that's out of bounds off of Ballot. We go to our first commercial break, all tied up at eight. Kyron Cartwright be putting on a show at some dance hall. <laughs> Spin cycle all the way. Tyron Cartwright, give me all two of these. Sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Hop on the subway and take it to 34th Street. And you can come right here to Madison Square Garden for the Big East Tournament 8-8 ball game here in the first half quarterfinal game number two between the fifth seed Providence Friars and a fourth seed Creighton Blue Jays. And look who's going to be checking in for the Blue Jays, number four, Ronnie Horrell Jr. The all Big East first team. We saw Trayvon Blewett put on a performance in the first game. We also saw Shamori Pons in the first game. Here in this one, we got Marcus Foster. All guys on that list put the ball in the basket <laughs> at a high rate. Is Jalen Brunson the national player of the year? I mean, he's right there. I, I don't see why he wouldn't be considered in the top three just because he's been so consistent throughout the the course of the year, he didn't have the up and down. Are season. you going into politics? That, oh, that seemed like a yes or no answer. Now you give me a top three. Did you ask me? Yeah. My opinion. <laughs> I gave you my opinion. Right? That, that's what you asked, right? 
Early White for three. And this ball is off of Ronnie Harrell Jr. will stay Providence ball. Okay, who do you have for player to you? I have Jalen Brunson. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> who do you want? Isaiah Jackson checks in. Number 44 here for Providence as Malik White goes to the bench. Again, Ronnie Harrell Jr. Missed the last few games with an infection in his foot. Cartwright picked up by Thomas. Underneath Bullock. Rodney Bullock has been active so far. He's got five points. Five of the ten for the Friars. It's a two-point lead for Providence. Well, he can give you so much. I mean, you can shoot the ball, get to the basket. Oh, the strength right. right there by Foster. You see the shoulder, the left shoulder, right in the chest. The Brett Rodney Bullock knocked him back. Allow Foster to be able to finish that inside. That stopped a 7 nothing run for the Friars. Cartwright for three. Contested. Doesn't matter. Nothing but the bottom of the net. You see, the body language for Kyron Cartwright right now dictates that he's going to have a good game because now he's into it. He's engaged. Morrell off the mark with his three. No, he's getting the loose balls. He's pushing the ball up. He's making shots. Diallo dribbles in, misses the jumper. Mintz, Thomas, the corner three. No, Hedner keeps it around a couple times. And now it's Diallo with the rebound. Hedner, multiple chances that time, not able to tip it in. Jacob Epperson getting up off the bench. He will check in. Cartwright for three again. And this time he misses the rebound for Davion Mintz. Mintz, the sophomore of Charlotte, North Carolina. Foster for three. In and out, rebound for Jalen Lindsay. The Blue Jays won for their last eight from the floor. Ed Cooley says, let's walk it up. Jackson for three. Ronnie Harrell, he can handle the ball. He can run the point. Harrell, a little bit out of control, throws up the wild shot, was looking for a foul. Jackson the other way, there's Thomas with the interception. Kyrie Thomas. Yeah, that was just a bad decision right there. Jackson in transition. Hegner now for three. That's a bit long. That's usually one that goes down for Toby Hegner. Well, especially in transition, when he's a trailer, he's able to catch, get his feet right and knock it in, but you know, either team right now doesn't have a rhythm offensively. This is a chance you can try to get yourself to the basket, get to the free throw line. Underneath, Lindsey blows the bunny, but tips it in. Yeah, there you go, get the ball inside. First try, you don't get it, but Lindsey quick off that second bounce, was able to get back up before his defender and tip it back in. 15-10, Friars leading. Nice bounce for Tony Mintz, wow! You don't see that very often by Davion Mintz. Yeah, but what you see is the read and react with Hegner Mintz is denied, but immediately his instincts were to cut back door. And athleticism, Mintz able to finish inside. Stepping up here on Broadway. Diallo the pull-up. Hegner gets the rebound. Here come the Blue Jays. Thomas up ahead. Harrell doesn't handle it. 10.36 to go here in the first half. Kyron Cartwright able to knock down the contested three. If he's going well, it's a good sign for Providence. But how about Davion Mintz?
welcoming himself to the big show here in New York City. Three-point lead for the Friars. Back here at MSG, 15 to 12. Providence leading the Creighton Blue Jays in this 5-4 matchup. And for Toby Hegner, it's gotta be awesome having his mom, Tracy, here in attendance. Tracy recently had breast cancer surgery. And she is here watching her son, Toby, play. Toby tying a record, playing in his 72nd Big East game in the season finale Saturday at Marquette. But Tracy, we wish you well. Keep fighting. And, and it goes back to my point. When I found this out to the Villanova game, I said this on air, is that you never know what a young man is going through. You know, he personally had to deal with his own injuries. Right. And now he had to deal with his mom going through her struggles. So sometimes you see a young man on the court and don't know what's going on with him. And then you dig a little bit deeper. Uh, and that's why you have great support system, which is your team. Jalen Lindsay knocks down the three. And by the way, Toby Hegner, great, great kid. As is a lot of these young men on both teams. Mitch Ballin tries to answer a three. Epperson gets called for an over-the-back foul as he goes over the back of Khalif Young, who has just checked in. Jacob Epperson, a very interesting story. This is a kid who burned his red shirt mm -hmm. on January 27th. So the Friars have never seen Epperson play in person because he wasn't around for both those games. He came in after Martin Kroppel tore his ACL on January 17th. They decided they're going to play him. And when he's been playing, he's played well. well I tell you what, against Villanova in that upset win at home, Mitchell Ballack and Epperson had huge roles. Because again, you didn't see Ballack and what he could do. He knocked down jump shots. Epperson in the pick and roll, in particular in the middle of the court, was very effective of catching and then finishing at the rim. Kind of filling the role of Martin Crawford. A little 2-3 zone right here. Communication is the key. Epperson nearly got trapped. Shot clock down to nine. Morrell. Back to Thomas. Thomas puts up the three. Another miss from three-point land. Creighton now one for eight from deep. Well, and I love Ed Cooley switching the defense up a little bit, knowing that Creighton's prepared a couple times to play against the man-to-man. -man switched it over the zone, forcing the ball to stay out of the lane and on the perimeter more. Relief Young gets doubles. Tyshawn Alexander comes to help. Shot clock at five. Front run. Against Thomas Cartwright, loose ball on the floor with his shot clock violation. Well, how about Ball at that time able to pluck the ball away a little bit and just a little something to leave Young. You see that pass that came out of the post? It was a looping pass. So now it took time to get to Cartwright. The defender could get back. If it was a straight line pass, Cartwright would be able to catch and then penetrate and beat his guy. Tyshawn Alexander, the freshman, also out of Charlotte, North Carolina, went to school at Oak Hill Academy. First player ever from Oak Hill to go to Creighton. Played for the legendary high school coach, Steve Smith. alley -oop for Emerson, off the glass. That's what he can bring to the table here for the Blue Jays. Well, also recognizing with Doug McGregor McDermott is running that pick and roll in the middle of the lane when you have shooters on the wing because it's tough to get help off of those shooters. And now you can either make a play for yourself or as we saw, throw it to the rim and let Epperson go get it. Shot clock at nine. Thomas on Cartwright. Jackson puts up the three as well short air ball Diallo he steps on the baseline it'll be a turnover and Jackson hesitated too I got to be honest I love love watching Kyrie Thomas play defense as he'll go out right now they don't want to go but there have been coaches in the conference who have said about Jordan one of them it's like Deion Sanders in football when he was playing corner, he took away that half of the field. When he's playing defense on a player, you almost have to go away from that guy. What well, he loves playing defense and the challenge of shutting someone that now listen, some guys are just good and they're gonna score, but consistently Kyrie is always trying to take away the strength of the opponent he's guarding. That's just a high IQ of how to play the game. Davion Mintz three. 
Again, a struggle from three-point land here for the Blue Jays early. Makai Ashton Lankford in right now here for the Friars as Cartwright went to the bench to get just an extra breather. One for ten from three-point land is Creighton. Ashton Lankford, the kick out. Bullock for three. And a rebound here for Alexander. Foster will get fouled by Alpha Diallo. And I told you. Epperson, Jacob, Abel. Pick and roll, throw it to the rim. Let me go get it. I'll take care of you making his impact felt. The big fella inside. He went up high for that one. Four point lead for the Friars. A four point game here in quarterfinal number two of four today and tonight here at MSG for the Creighton Blue Jays. They began the season 15 and four. But then injuries came. Martin Cromple tore his ACL on January 17th against Seton Hall. Marcus Foster named to the first team all Big East for the second consecutive season. Kyrie Thomas repeated as Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Last year he shared the award. This year he went solo. And Martin Cromple, he had his ACL surgery. And he is here with the team. How about this? He has torn his ACL three times. Twice on one knee, one on the other. And he was off to a really good start. 11.9 points per game, 8.1 rebounds per game. Ballot hits a three, just the second three of the game for the Blue Jays. Now two of 11, and it's a one-point game. But one thing this Creighton team does an outstanding job of is spacing the court, especially when a guy is penetrating off the dribble. They allow them to have space to drive, but if not, you present yourself with an open shot that you're able to get. Great wraparound pass. And Khalif Young with the finish. Did you see that? How did he see around the defense to get it to Young inside? Alexander for three. And that goes over the backboard. Will be Providence ball. Well, I guess we'll find out how he saw it because Epson's right here. And he just goes right around him. And Marcus falls a half a second late of getting that steal to step in there. Talking about some zip on that pass. Alpha Diallo has to be one of the most improved players in the conference this year. I mean, he's up there, as was Martin Crumple. I will say this about the Big East. Since the reformation, you got two one and downs. Ellison Henry, and he had Justin Pack. Everything else has been player development, junior, senior. That's why it's such a competitive league. Not that coaches don't go after one and done guys, but you see Bullock right here taking the spill. But the value of developing young men into better basketball players is seen throughout the Big East. Diallo with the finish. Kyron Cartwright, though, is hobbling. Looks like he tweaks something on that left leg. Kyrie Thomas, little crossover, gets fouled by Bullock. And let's see if Providence has to sub for bat for Kyron Cartwright. Not sure if maybe he got like a dead leg. Well, right here on the pass, he already seems like he's in yeah, a little it pain. Before. Yeah. So a lot of times when the guy's grabbing like that, he may have bumped knees with somebody because we didn't see him hit the deck. Cartwright will go to the bench. True Edwards coming off the bench. Well, one thing you hate too is when you do that. He wants to stay mobile and stay up because you don't want it to stiffen up if he did have impact. Rub it down, spray a little you know, with that biofreeze or whatever it is <laughs> on there. Spray. No, seriously. I know. You know, but keep him moving so it doesn't stiffen up. Foster. Let's go. Let's go. He knew it was off. Lindsay gets the rebound. Malik White will run the point right now here for Providence. Five and a half to go here in the first half. Five point lead for the fifth seed Friars. Shot clock down to six. White doesn't get the roll off the glass. Mix pushing it. Foster trying to leave it 
for Kyrie Thomas. It's a kick ball. It will be Creighton ball. Let's go back and see if we can find out what happened to Kyron Cartwright. We're right here. Right there. He was, yeah, just even on that move and cut to the basket, he was limping gingerly on that leg. Alpha Diallo will get called for the foul here against Foster. That's number two against Diallo. No, no, almost. I thought it was me. I thought he called it. <laughs> Nate Watson, an all rookie team member. He'll come in. Nate Watson, the first Friar since Ladante Hanson back in 2012 to be named for the all rookie team. And yeah, Coach Cooley calls him a bucket waiting to happen. He just has to continue to improve and understand, you know, how to be effective at this level. But he has the skill set to be a really good player here. Shot clock at six. Heckner saw it. And now Heckner loses it. Up ahead, here comes White. White off the glass. No. Contested by Kyrie Thomas. Foster finding Thomas in transition. Has it poked away. Rodney Bullock got a hand on it. Ballack able to back check and get it. Up ahead, Thomas with two hands. And Drew Edwards on that last fast break. I thought he should have kicked it to the right side here to Rodney Bullock. He tried to sneak it in on the other side and it got deflected away. Those transition points you can't give up when you have those opportunities. Extra pass, Edwards gets fouled on the three by Marcus Foster. Drew Edwards, who hasn't scored in a game since February 10th. Four for 25 from three on the season, just gets fouled by the senior Marcus Foster. Got a chance to get to the free throw line, line right here, but it, that was an excellent offense because the ball was just hopping on the perimeter for the Friars and able to get the defense shifting and Marcus Foster late on the closeout committed the foul. Edwards knocks down the free throw. Now their team shooting the ball well. Providence 37.5% for the game. Creighton 36.4%. Yeah, but if you're the Friars, it's kind of disjointed, and that kind of benefits you a lot more because the rhythm in which Creighton loves to play with offensively is not there. So th this is the kind of game you want if you're Ed Cooley and this Friars team. Ed Cooley has said time and time again, I'll junk it up. I don't care. Yeah. Whatever we got to do to win, that's how we got to play. Well, they're comfortable being uncomfortable. And playing that way where a lot of teams again that rely on the rhythmic kind of offense to get it going it, it takes them time to adjust to it and that's when providence can really take advantage of it. providence going zone here Shot clock at eight. Ballard. Skip pass. Miss. Miss to the reverse. No. And the rebound comes out to White. Picked off again by Thomas. Alley oop to Thomas. And now a foul by White. That was one of those. Even Thomas just said to Mitz, hey, you go up with it next time. The Blue Jays, they love to run. They're trying to push it that time, it paid off. The two-handed flush for Kyrie Thomas, who's got six on the day so far. But it's a five-point lead for the Friars here in the first half. Four ties, two lead changes. Friars currently up five. Rob Stone with you coming up on the Jeep halftime report. We'll show you the late fireworks between St. John's and Xavier, plus the already chaotic Big 12 tournament took us into overtime. Oh, yeah. And a little bit more coming our way as well as Virginia may have finally confirmed a number one spot in the tournament. You know who's in the house? It's a big event when El Presidente 
Fernando Fiore is in the house. We are 98 days away until the World Cup. Fernando, a big part of our presentation. He'll be hanging out in Red Square in Moscow. He's probably uh, tweeting somebody right now. El Presidente, Jim, you gonna join us in Moscow? No, and I'm right there, soccer and NASCAR. Those are my two favorite things going on right now. How, how about Stoner playing with Ali Begovic, Jamar Ali Begovic pregame before the first game? Stoner showing off his skills in the suit. Now that's just impressive. He's a big kid at heart. That Stoner is. It kind of fits him a little bit because he's short in stature. He can you know, use those legs. And I hear every word you say, Jim. Jones. I know. That's a, and that's why I keep I'm saying. looking at you right now. Don't, don't mess with my five nine fury. All right, back in the game. Foster. <laughs> Marcus Foster makes it a three-point game with that dunk as we approach three minutes to go here in the first half. Yeah, Foster was a little upset at the rim on that dunk. Lindsey for three, way off. Thomas, Ballack, and he gets fouled by Isaiah Jackson. Well, see, when you take a quick shot like that in the corner and you don't draw iron, and the defense is not set, that allows a team like Creighton to really get back at you quickly before you can recover. So it tapes up Kyron Cartwright. A nice massage over there. That's that special tape. Michelle Wee oftentimes wears it in golf. You know what it does? <laughs> it, it, it it's looks good, I don't know. It's a, it's a you secret. Get, you can get it in multicolors too. It's a secret. Ballack at the free throw line. Shows Creighton over Kansas. Rumor has it he was the player to the name later when Nick Baugh transferred from Kansas to Creighton. <laughs> Nick Baugh, of course, will be on the halftime show with Donnie Marshall and Rod Stone. One point ball game here. Watson, the spin move, no, and it's out of bounds. Off of Foster, he's saying no, but. I tend to agree here with the call. I like the move that time by Watson. It was quick, it was assertive. Epperson just a little longer affected that shot. Edwards, finding Watson. And Watson this time gets the roll. You can see how quick that play was activated. Inbound, quick, pick and roll inside. Watson able to go one on one. Epperson will take threes. Jacob Emerson's now four for four in the season from three-point land. Yeah, Emerson says, you take your two, I'll offset it by getting one more from behind the three-point line. And now Kyrie Thomas gets called for a reach-in foul. Well, I like assertive plays, especially inbound, underneath inbounds, here, inside. Watson able to get one-on-one. -on -one. Off balance a little bit, but the soft touch allowed a nice little flick of the wrist to get two points. So we said earlier that these two coaches are two of the really great guys. And we're lucky in this conference. We get a lot of great people who are, who are not just head coaches, but assistant coaches. Uh -huh. On that call, both Greg McDermott and Ed Tooley were laughing, and they were both looking at each other, smiling, cracking up. A turnover. Ballot has it. Ballot. Trying to get it to the corner, and it's deflected by Edwards. Edwards playing some good minutes here off the bench for the Friars. Well, it's, it's the mutual respect that the coaches have in this league for each other. The amount of work that goes in to develop these young men to become successful beyond basketball, they respect that. They respect the competitive nature and what everybody's trying to accomplish. I mean, you know, ultimately you want to win a Big East title, national championship, but you respect your opponent. That's what I love about these, these coaches. Alexander locks it up for Epperson. Great patience by Alexander that time. The Blue Jays on a 9-2 run to take a two-point lead. It's a dunk of the day already for the Blue Jays. But it's ironic. You saw with Justin Patton, his evolution as a player. Crumple, his evolution. You see it with Epperson. All bigs that came in and kind of like projects a little bit. You see the improvement quickly within the system. Watson has it blocked by Epperson. Here comes Thomas. Leaves it off for Ballack. Timeout taken by the Friars. 
An 11-2 run here for the Blue Jays to lead by four. When you carry out, some things are out of your control. But with Domino's new carry-out insurance, we'll replace your pizza if it gets ruined after you leave the store. Carry out large three-topping pizzas for $7.99 every day. From the director of Fast and the Furious, the Hurricane Heist is in theaters tomorrow, March 9th, back here at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Jacob Epperson. The Blue Jays are plus nine with him on the floor. And you had mentioned this, the evolution of some of these bigs, right? Justin Patton, now Epperson. You look at even Jesse Govan last night with Georgetown. Right. Greg McDermott is 6'9". Patrick Ewing is seven feet. Danny Manning at Wake Forest. What they have done with big men is remarkable. Well, because they have a prime understanding of what it means to play in the post. A lot of times, a post player is subject to his teacher. And at most universities, it's a guard that's a coach that's teaching post players how to play, which is the opposite. And that's why John Thompson was always good at Georgia. Rodney Bullock misses a couple times. Here comes Alexander. Morrell. They'll pull it back yet, settle things down. This could be a huge stop for Providence if they can get it and score, kind of stymie the momentum going into halftime. Morrell misses the three. So now you can hold for the final shot. And that's what Ed Curley yells at Kyron Cartwright. It's an 11 2 run. You can make it a two point game or a one point game with a three. Ten seconds to go. Edwards to Cartwright. Four seconds. Bullock for three. No. Jackson, the offensive rebound and putback won't go. And the Cricket Blue Jays will end the half on an 11 2 run. Jacob Epperson, seven points, two blocks off the bench. Well, good defense here, not allowing the Friars to kind of get inside. Now, Jackson able to get the offensive rebound, but couldn't finish. In the 5-4 matchup, Providence against Creighton. The team split the season series. It's a four-point lead for the Blue Jays at the half. Back to these messages. Rob Stone, Donnie Marshall, Nick Baugh. For the City. A look at Bryant Park, not far from Madison Square Garden, where it's a four-point lead for the Blue Jays as we get set to start the second half in the 4-5 matchup of quarterfinal number two. Justin Kutcher alongside Jim Jackson. And Jim, an 11-2 run by the Blue Jays to end that first half. An impressive spurt at the end. Well, it was. It was impressive from the offensive perspective because Creighton was able to get the shots they wanted, but also defensively, they got multiple stops. Even though Providence got some shots inside, they were able to defend the paint and then get out and run. And that's the kind of momentum you want if you're Creighton going into half, see if they can bring that momentum into the second half. Let's take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. The shooting numbers, you see Providence just 31%. Neither team shot well from three-point land. Any other numbers stick out to you? Well, the second chance points, I think, right here for Providence because you haven't shot the ball well, but you did give yourself opportunities off of those misses to figure out ways to score for both teams. When you're disjointed offensively, two things can happen. One, get out and transition to get some baskets. Second, figure out ways to get to the free throw line. Kyron Cartwright was quiet in that first half, just five points. Cartwright had been guarded by Kyrie Thomas for much of the first half. Remember Gary Payton? They called him the glove. That's right. They may nickname that to Kyrie Thomas soon. Marcus Foster, the corner three. That's good. 
So it's a 14 to 2 run, largest lead of the game for the Blue Jays. And that's the kind of stamp you want coming out of halftime if you're crazy. The initial possession, bang, you want to hit your opponent right in the mouth with the shot to continue to extend the lead. Jalen Lindsay to answer right back and does. How about it? Jalen Lindsay now with nine. And how about the activity that time? Cartwright on the baseline navigating perfect to perfection getting the shot outside to Lindsay That was the first assist of the game for Kyron Cartwright. He led the conference in assist for the second straight year Foster the deep three And the foul staying on the floor. This is going against Providence it's gonna go against Malik White. Well, again, I talked about the spacing in the first half, and the mark of a really good team is how you pass the ball, especially if you're a shooter receiving it. You want to be able to catch right in rhythm in your shooting pocket, so now you can just go up and shoot, and there it is. Underneath, out of bounds, a direct line pass right inside. It shouldn't happen, but it was completed once again by an excellent pass. Mitch Ballack now with nine. The all freshman team member a foul away from the ball is going to go against Ballot. And that's the second against Ballot. Yeah, you're probably you just can't have Creighton is already a potent scoring team. You can't give up an easy basket underneath out of bounds to a team like Creighton. It just it, it kills your momentum as far as defensively when you do that. Diallo to the hoop and it'll be a blocking foul against Balak so all of a sudden he's got three fouls and that was an easy call for James Breeding to make as you could see he was clearly inside that restricted area you know Diallo did an excellent job with a little hesitation dribble at the free throw line which froze the defenders and Balak on the back end undercut and got there a little bit too late to try to take the charge for Diallo to the free throw line. Diallo hits the free throw. Ballack will go to the bench. Ronnie Harrell Jr. will come in for him as Ballack has those three fouls now. And what's significant about that is that what you lose with Ballack is height a little bit, but he spreads the court. Ronnie Harrell comes in. He's going to give you activity, playmaking, but he doesn't spread the court. The same that Ballack has is basically you had four perimeter players and Heckner inside, but all five to shoot the basketball. Vince. Picks up the triple. And nearly turns it over. There's Hegner. Hegner falling away. Short Thomas. Diallo takes him down. No whistle. Here's Cartwright the other way. Into the corner, White to the hoop, hanging, and he draws the foul, and that'll be against Davion Mintz. And you know, Hegner on the closeout and even the catch, because he's had so many injuries, sometimes he's off balance, not able to explode, and even on this closeout here, not being able to really stop, you know, and, and that, a lot of it is because of the injuries, but his closeout wasn't as good, but Malik White understood and he saw that Hegner was kind of off balance and took advantage of it. Malik White missed over a month with a leg injury from December 6th to January 20th. This is the first free throw. Roberts, 5 of 10 from the free throw line. Now 6 of 11. But this score right here. This type of game is what Ed Cooley and Providence want because this Creighton team, they average almost 85 points per game, good for eighth in the country. And the ability for Providence to be able to throw the run and get back into it and not, a, not allow it to balloon out of control, I think it's the key. Yes, good hesitation in the reverse. No, Hegner there for a putback. Bullock to set the screen. Cartwright. Bullock 
Good pump fake. Hanging off the glass. Pretty move by Rodney Bullock. He's a thousand point scorer in his career. He's got seven here in this one. Yeah, but once again, it was a poor closeout by Hegner. Again, dropping that left foot allowed Bullock to pump fake and drive right in the baseline. Jalen Lindsay read that pass. Bullock now for three. Starting to feel it. Got ten. One point ball game. 37 36. It's what you'd expect in a 4 5 matchup. Miss left open for two. Davion Vance just looks like he's playing with more and more confidence. Well, I love how he was able to walk the screen down and get to his comfort zone, which was a nice little 15-foot pull-up. <laughs> Lindsey. Lindsey's having his best game in a long time here today. He's mixing up his game, too. He's just not relying on the change shot, Justin. That time he was on the post and was able to go and operate one on one. Boston goes to the hoop. Marcus Foster. The foul is against Bullock. Rodney Bullock. Strong take to the hoop. And then Bullock from the outside. A quick five points for him. But the answer by Foster, he'll go to the free throw line, trying to convert the three-point play. No storm, not much here in the city, but in New Jersey. I hear Pete Macheska got over 27 inches at his house. Big East teams in the NCAA tournament, according to Howie Schwab, a couple of number one seeds, Villanova and Xavier, a couple of seven seeds. Can the Friars, if they win here today, can they move up? Can Marquette, with a win tonight, can they get in? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of unanswered questions, but how about this? You're talking about, it, it, stays, it stays that way. That means 60% of your teams are getting into the tournament. Yeah. I mean, and that's, from a percentage perspective, 10 teams, six are getting in, it's huge. You know, again, you're still talking about Marquette with an opportunity, depending on what happens. He just speaks value for the, the depth of the league. Out of bounds. It will be Providence ball off the miss from Marcus Foster. And you know, it's funny because a lot of people talk about what's the best conference in, in college basketball. And you said, I mean, six out of ten teams, maybe seven out of ten teams. That's that's really impressive. But what I think stands out about this team is just the depth top to bottom. I mean, we saw Marquette DePaul go to the wire last night. And a foul away from the ball. This will go against Davion Mintz. Well, to me, when I look at the strength of a conference, it's not always the top heavy. It's, it's that middle tier, that second to third tier. Are they really competitive? Can they go out on a, any given night and beat a high-quality team? And in this league, I think we've answered that question with an astounding yes. But, you know, teams in this league in that second tier can are just as competitive. So, Shot clock down to six. Lindsay shot clock at three, has to throw one up. He's able to draw iron. The rebound comes out to Harrell. Harrell, good hesitation. Hangs, no whistle. Cartwright the other way. Underneath, Diallo. Back to a one-point ball game. Well, it's been physical from the beginning, and that time, bodies crash, but verticality rule in effect. Foster too oh. long on that one. And a rebound for Lindsay, a chance for Providence to take the lead. Bullock against Epperson. Epperson contests. Good defense there by the freshman. Kyrie Thomas trying for the European step through. And he Commits the offensive foul. Cartwright draws the charge. And Cameron Cartwright is always good at smelling out and seeking out when the player is going to commit to their movement. Right here, Cartwright is already in a position to absorb the contact and take the foul. And again, that's growth, that's experience, that's maturity, but more importantly, that's understanding your opponent and when to step in and make a play happen. 
Just about six minutes into the second half of play. One point lead for the Blue Jays. Justin Kutcher alongside Jim Jackson here on FS1. Quarterfinal number two of four here today and tonight at Madison Square Garden. The best day of this tournament. Cartwright against Alexander. Good defense. Great defense. Wait a minute. Hang on. The officials are getting together. Jeff Clark and James Brady discussing this. There is four seconds on the shot clock. And it's going to be Creighton Ball. And Balak is coming back in with three fouls to replace Harrell. Rotation. Tyshawn Alexander, excellent footwork. And then once Cartwright committed, he used it. Alexander used his height and actually used his body a little bit more to contest the shot without committing the foul. and foul here against Bullock and Bullock just looked at his coach Ed Cooley and said my bad I didn't need that and that's his third foul and Isaiah Jackson takes off the warm up he's going to come in and going out is Malik White and for Providence they're right here Justin but what we've seen with this great team is their ability to go on a you know an 8 2 run 10 2 run and like your Providence you got to avoid that at any cost Trigger at this time of the game. Thomas lays it off to Alexander. Foster, what a shot pick. Wraparound pass for Alexander. The three is good. Big time play by Foster. Passing up the shot. As the assist to the freshman. That's 14 assists on 18 main field goals. And it makes it tough for you to guard. You're the opponent of Creighton. Shot clock down to five. Bullock fading away off the glass. That's an NBA move right there by Rodney Bullock. Yeah, but how about Bullock maintaining his angle so when he spent to the baseline, he still had enough room to utilize the glass. A turnover here. Thomas thought he had his man instead of the man cut. Well, patience, he's no, he knows where Kyrie Thomas is at, but he also knows the baseline is open. Enough room to rise over a smaller Alexander in soft touch. And I love the eyes that we just got. That was him looking at the opposite shot clock to see how much time he had to work. Diallo has it blocked by Epperson. The putback is good, and we're tied at 44. In the second effort that time, as a shooter, you know where the ball is coming off. Diallo able to use that second bounce to get offensive rebound and stick it back in thomas trying to lay it off for ballot and it's off diallo diallo thought it was off of ballot but right now it's going to stay creighton ball well once again this is where creighton was able to score underneath in the same position before out of bounds the guy who's defending the ball even if you're playing zone, you got to make the ball come back out towards half court. You can't allow it to get into the interior of your defense. Shot clock at 10. Foster, step back. He thought it was good. I thought it was good. <laughs> it, looked good. it looked good for my angle. Jackson uh, into Epperson. Epperson of the block. This kid's been really good off the bench, a difference maker. Shot clock at 10. Bullock trying to post up, shot clock now at four. Lindsey rises up for three. Epperson chases down the rebound. We'll have a whistle, a break at the next whistle. Alexander, his jumper. A rebound for Jackson. Providence trying to take the lead. They last led 26-23 late in the first half. Yeah, both teams a little winded from the pace going up and down. Ed Cooley slowing down the offense a little bit, see if he can get a high-quality shot. Take the lead. Bullock for the lead. Epperson with the rebound. 
Foster. And he gets fouled by Lindsey and Foster. He's down on the ground. Slow to get up. Looked like he was grabbing his hip for a second as he hobbles towards the bench. Marcus Foster, the first team All Big East performer. Let's take a look. Goes down hard. Physical, physical game here in the Big East quarterfinals. Epperson with the block. We are all tied up at 44 here with 10.45 to go. Sixth tie of the game, 44-44. Providence and Creighton tied here with 10.45 to go. Marcus Foster in this ball game, 12 points on five of 10 from the floor, two of four from three-point land. Yeah, some, some guys are just professional scorers. And Marcus <laughs> Foster is one of them. No matter what defense you throw in front of them, it's just gonna be a tough out. Speaking of outs, NCAA tournament resume for the Creighton Blue Jays. One thing that's so vital this year is those quadrant one wins. You see they've got three of them over Villanova, Seton Hall, and UCLA. Yeah, I mean, and you know, the quad two lost Marquette, Baylor, but I see themselves sitting in a good position in regards to, there's no question you know, that they're gonna be in a tournament. But like you said, can they win a game, win here, win another one, advance in, and maybe get a higher seeding Okay, higher seeding may put you closer regionally to where you're at, which means a lot. So they're still playing for a lot in regards to where they can go post the Big East tournament. Well, Marcus Foster entered this game with 1,268 points at Creighton. He entered this game four points shy of tying a certain guy who people know as a pitcher, Bob Gibson. Wow. He has now surpassed Bob Gibson on the all-time scoring list at Creighton. How about that? Ballot for three, knocks it down. Again, those plays out of a timeout are so critical. And that leads to three there for the Blue Jays. And that's why coaches always hit it, stay engaged and pay attention. Because now you're able to come out, and whether you make the shot, you have no control of it. But do you get the shot that you drew up and you won? A foul away from the ball will go against Tyshawn Alexander as he fouled Alpha Diallo. So we mentioned Bob Gibson. Everyone knows him as the great pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals, the Hall of Famer. How about him as the player, the basketball player? I saw this picture. I was in Omaha at, uh, I think it was Prime State, I think it was, or wherever I was at, downtown. And I, I was surprised. I saw, I saw his picture on the wall. I said, I didn't know that. Pretty cool, right? It is pretty cool. He, he played for the Harlem Globetrotters. I did know that. I heard that before because through blood and through marriage, my uncle was one of the original Harlem Globetrotters. Wow. Alpha Diallo. He went down. They're going to say he was huh. out of bounds. Alpha Diallo able to walk it off, though. So what you're saying is through blood and through marriage and through genes, your family's pretty good. Yeah, pretty blessed, brother. <laughs> By osmosis, I was able to become, get a little bit of talent. <laughs> I don't know how your fastball is, though. Well, it's erratic. I can tell you that. <laughs> Especially on the mound, man. I'm already tall, and I'm throwing down. They don't tell it where it's going. Ballot cutting to the hoop. Almost a five-second violation. It's knocked out of bounds by Isaiah Jackson. Will stay Blue Jays basketball with 19 on the shot clock. Yeah, and always a tough place in this deep corner. The angle to get the ball in. A lot of times going to come back towards half court. See? Dangerous pass. There's Cartwright with the steal. Cartwright able to lay it in. You yeah. called it. Yeah, because you have to lob it a lot of times to get it back out. When the ball is in the air for such a long time, it allows the defender to recover, just like Cartwright did on that play. Ed Cooley was asking for his Providence fans to get up on their feet, and now a turnover as Hegner could not handle the pass. Again, the angle. This is what good defense does. Nate Jackson forces the ball to go over the top, and Cartwright smartly, excuse me, <laughs> lets Ballot go by. 
Again, creating offense off your defense. Providence able to cut the lead to one. Again, they have not led since it was 26 23 in the first half. Jackson trying to get around Hegner. Hey, Jackson. Look at this. Are you kidding me? That's like shades of Tiger Woods at the Masters. It's just sitting there waiting for it to go. Right, come on. I mean, it this happens. You can't. I couldn't place it there any better. The it only it's way it's better there. is if the swoosh is showing for Nike. How about this? And they get there the it is. Providence, you get to retain possession, but now the possession goes in the favor of Creighton if there's a jump ball or something. Cut right against Thomas. Diallo tied up, jump ball, and there it is for Creighton. And guess who got the jump ball? Kyrie, Kyrie Thomas. Thomas. Yep, right back in the right place. The trait, when Providence runs their offense, especially the, the air bowl series, everything is compact and tight. But also, it keeps the offense side, but more importantly, it keeps the defense packed in. That's why Kyrie was able to step in there, calls the jump ball. All right, so if Gary Payton was the glove, what, what's Kyrie Thomas's nickname? The mitt. <laughs> He's not quite the glove yet, buddy. Not quite. He's working his magic, though. Foster turns the corner and puts it in. 14 for Foster. <laughs> Lindsay, shot clock at seven. Lindsay throws one up. No. Rebound comes out. Bullock able to get it. Deflected ball by Alexander, and it will stay Providence basketball. But that time the activity for the Friars allowed the tip out, and now you retain possession. And you know, coming down the stretch of this game, those extra plays for Providence could be huge in regards to really walking out of this afternoon with a W. Ed Cooley looking on intently. He's got the jacket back on. Who's up with that? Think, is, you think it's a second half thing? I think it's a superstition thing. What, to take it off in the first half and just put it on? to change it up. Oh, okay. Cartwright for the tie. Thomas with a rebound. Psychologically, how big is it that Providence has had chances to take the lead, but they haven't been able to do it? Uh, it's just it's, it's one of those mental blocks, too. It's like you're right there, you're right there, you're doing everything right, but yet still you can't fully take control of the game. They give a lot of credit to Creighton from that perspective, too. Jackson, a nice job coming in, getting the steal. Jackson in a hoop, and the left puts it in. Uh, how about the move? Jackson saw that Davion Mintz was prepared to take a charge. He took one extra dribble that allowed him to get to his left hand to kind of glide by him to avoid the contact. Ballot open for three. Comes up short. Again, a chance for the Friars to take the lead. And can they break through on this possession? Jackson for the lead. They do! Timeout taken by the Blue Jays. They had been so close so many times. Isaiah Jackson, the transfer from George Mason, finally able to put his team back on top as they now lead 51-49 here in the quarterfinals, trying to move on to take on the top-seeded Xavier Musketeers. interesting nuggets about going to the Big East tournament. When you're getting off the train and you go up the stairs, you kind of got this emotional feeling like we're here. We've arrived in New York. You go up the elevator, you see it's dirty in the elevator. Then you go into the game. Those images will never go away because there's no greater place to play a national tournament than Madison Square Garden. This taste of the Big East tournament is sponsored by Guinness. Here's to us all. 
Ed Cooley's team leads right now by two with 7.14 to go here in this quarterfinal matchup. A look at the resume for the Providence Friars. A couple of big wins for Providence as they knocked off both Xavier and Villanova and a win at Marquette in those quadrant one wins. They did have some losses yeah. in quadrant four. That's what hurts. Yeah, I mean, Minnesota DePaul, Minnesota at one point right. know, thought maybe with the injuries and other things happening, it wouldn't have been a bad loss, but DePaul and that UMass hey, does. In. But again, you got a chance to right your wrongs with a conference tournament by getting quality wins, and this would be one of them. So Providence can kind of close this thing out, but Drake is not going away without a fight. You knew that. Foster the step back jump. Oh, no. Kyrie Thomas kept it alive. Here comes Cartwright. Diallo with the left misses and the rebound for Mitz. Ballot coming off the screen. Isaiah Jackson. That'd be on Mintz. Little big boy game right here. Up high, absorbing the contact. Got a chance to get to the line to get an old fashioned three point play. 51 51. Creighton with a chance to take the lead with a free throw here by Davion Mintz. Let's go back to the 2014 Big East final. It was these two teams. Remember that guy? He was pretty good, Doug McDermott. Bryce Cotton. Bryce Cotton was awesome. He and Ladate Hinton led the Friars the 65-58 win. It was the second ever Big East Tournament Championship for the Friars, 1994. The other one, as we look at the bracket here in the 2018 tournament, Xavier awaits the winner of this one. Tonight, we've got Marquette against Villanova, Butler against Seton Hall. But right now, with 6.31 to go, this game has been fun. I think we have some more fun in store for you. The fifth lead change of the game, 52-51. Bullock gets doubled. Lindsay for three. Pull it. He knocks it out of bounds. It will be Blue Jay ball. Now how about Creighton that time loading up to the side where Rodney Bullock was at, not allowing him on the catch to have space. And I thought Marcus Foster did an excellent job of kind of rooting Bullock out a little bit more right into the arm to the defense. The back door cut and now a block by Bullock on Foster. Cut right the other way. And a foul is going to be called here against Davion Mintz. Number three against Mintz. Well, first of all, the recovery right here by Pullock. To get the block, and now immediately the ball goes out in transition to block. And Cartwright smartly pushes right at the de defense. It gets to the heart of the paint. Able to get a pick up a foul and get to the free throw line. Cartwright, a 76% free throw shooter, hits the first. Seven for 12 at the line are the Friars in this one. Chance to retake the lead. Misses it. So instead, it's the eighth tie of this game. Foster gets open for three in the corner. Can't get it to go. Lindsay with a rebound, and that's a double-double for him. The second of his career. The other came back when he was a sophomore. How about that? He has essentially been disappearing recently, and he shows up here in the Big East Tournament quarterfinals. Well, no better time than the present. On a big stage in a big game. Bullock draws the foul against Foster. Got him up in the air. Number two against Foster, eighth 
against the Blue Jays. Providence has five team fouls. As a team, Providence shoots 70% from the line. Bullock hits the first. Are well, you talking about a Creighton team that also, from a free throw percentage, loves to get to the free throw line and they're able to convert at a high clip themselves? Seventy-five percent. So you talk about late game situations when you you have to knuckle up a little bit and make some free throws. You say advantage towards Creighton because of that. But again, in certain situations sometimes too, free throw percentage can kind of throw out the door. You know what kind of pressure it is at the end of the game. Kyrie Thomas has been quiet offensively here in the second half. Epperson is back in. He's been a difference maker for the Blue Jays. Shot clock down to seven. The lob to Epperson. Good help by Jackson coming over for the steal. Cartwright directing traffic. Diallo against Mintz. Go back to him. Uh, Mintz did a great job of rooting him out to key. Skip pass intercepted again here by Thomas. They've got numbers. Ballack up in the air nearly turned it over. Mintz. Cuts. Finds Epperson. The other way, Diallo with the finish. Wow, both teams getting up and down the court. Mintz making a play on the defensive end and then offensively to Epperson, but then the Friars attacking right back after. Out of bounds, it will be Providence ball. What a game, what a finish. 352 to go. Providence, Creighton going at it here in the quarterfinals for the right to take on Xavier. Welcome back to the Garden. Eight ties, eight lead changes, just one point separating Providence and Creighton. Make sure to stick around after the horn. The winning coach will join us live on set. Plus, some late-breaking developments around the fireworks at the conclusion of the St. John Xavier game. And it's been a Thursday full of buzzer beaters. We'll highlight them all. Guys, we'll see you after the game. Wow, that's some breaking news here. As far as this game is concerned, it is a great one. 55-54. Rodney Bullock got off to a good start. He's picked it up again here in the second. Well, always had the talent. Never was a question in regards to what he could do on a basketball court, but it just wasn't always consistent. But I think in this game this afternoon, on full display, he can beat you from the post. He's knocked down jump shots. You saw the block shot right there. And more important, he's active. When he's active in that way, he creates so many opportunities, more importantly, not just for himself, but for his teammates. Our game reset sponsored by SoFi Rethinking Personal Finance. Providence has the possession arrow. Providence still has a foul to give before Creighton is shooting free throws. Cartwright guarded by Foster. They put Kyrie Thomas on Bullock now trying to shut him down. Jackson the spin move. Epperson commits the foul. And Jackson took a shot to the head. And I was going to say, this possession was so important mentally for Providence because you fight so hard, you fight so hard. You finally get a lead, but then you give it back. To be able to extend it, I, I think it's so important here. Jackson, instead of settling for a jump shot, he saw he had the lane open, and he took advantage of it. So huge possession once again. Now you have to complete it by getting to the free throw line. A 78.9% free throw shooter. His first free throw attempts of the day. These teams met on December 31st. Creighton won that one 83-64. They met on January 20th in Providence. The Friars won 85-71. It's a two-point game here with 3.29 to go. Offensive rebound for Diallo, extra possession for the Friars. Yeah, Marcus Foster, you got to put a body on Diallo. Just being there is not good enough, as evidenced by that tip out and retained possession by Providence. 
Thomas on Lindsey. Diallo, the jumper. No. Foster gets the rebound. A mismatch inside with Cartwright, but good switch and recognition by Jackson to pick up Epperson. Epperson, they try to get it to him. They finally do. Coming to the hoop is Mintz. That goes in and out. Mintz fighting for the rebound. Jump ball, possession arrow, Providence. And Providence can't believe it. They thought it should have been a foul against Mintz. Wow, I thought Alpha Diallo, even though Providence gets the ball in the change of possession, excellent pass and cut, unable to finish. But right here, I thought Alpha Diallo had all ball to himself. And kind of could have just kind of let that play go a little bit more. But again, the possession changes hands once again. Back to Creighton after the next one. I mean, that now could be critical. Yes. This two-point game with 2:35 to play. Tyshawn Alexander's in. Shot clock at nine. Lindsey Jackson against Foster. Shot clock at three. Oh, it's a foul. Way off the bucket. Yeah. Marcus Foster was baiting him right there. He knew that Nick Jackson had to make a move. And then he was going to try to overpower him with his strength. So Marcus Foster absorbs the first one, but not the second one. A little acting there, in there, but he sold it good enough to get that offensive foul. And now Greg McDermott is doing offense, defense substitutions. He gets Mintz out, brings Epperson back in, allows Tyshawn Alexander to be the point guard. Middle pick and roll. Thomas, the hesitation. Thomas has it blocked by Bullock, gets it back, gets his back, but now draws the foul. It was the third block by Bullock, but then he was over aggressive and commits the foul. Well, how smart was it? The first time you go in, you get it blocked. Okay, I'm gonna get it back. I know you want to try to block the shot again. So I'm gonna use a little pump fake hesitation to get you in the air, draw you. Now get myself to the line. And that is also the fourth foul on Rodney Bullock. Now Kyrie Thomas at the line. And he gets the roll. Kyrie Thomas, just seven points, six rebounds, has been awesome defensively. And they switch out. Epperson goes out. Mintz comes back in. He does so many things well that... Even when he's not scoring, he has an effect on the game. I think the scoring part of it is an added bonus to what he brings. Timeout taken here by the Friars. Tie game with 2.02 to go. Don't go anywhere. Take a while, guess where I'll be watching. Where? Yeah. Uh, I'm at a cigar bar. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Both teams shooting free throws the rest of the way. The next foul, and Providence will be in the double bonus. I mean, in New York City, there's so many cigar bars to choose from. I don't know where exactly you'll be. Well, it's, a, it's a secret. I can't uh, tell well, exactly. I, I don't want you to creep in there thinking I'm dropping my name like you know me, like you're cool like that. You know what I mean? I, I, I would never do such a thing. All right. But you could. You don't. You're my, you're my guy. I, I, would, I appreciate I that. I would let you in. I appreciate hang, that. Come hang with me. Here's Cartwright. Cartwright slips, able to get rid of it. We got time on the clock. Jackson backing up the freshman. It's out of bounds. It never drew iron. It'll stay Providence ball with seven seconds on the shot clock. And Ed Cooley, he's wondering, did it ever touch the rim? And now the officials will go to the monitor to take a look, or they're going to see who it went out of bounds off of. I believe that's what they're going to look at to see who it was out. Let's see. That's Kyrie Thomas's hand. Not sure if Jackson got a piece of it or not. The call on the floor was that it will stay Providence ball. Yeah, you, and you know, the, the, the only issue I have with this. Did it hit the fingertip of Isaiah Jackson? Not even that. Let's say you're a team that doesn't have a timeout left. Now you're able to go in yeah. because of this and basically. I think it may have hit the fingertip. Watch his right, finger move. 
But see, watch the Tyree finger of, right of Jackson there. move. Watch okay. this. See that right there? Does it the does ring the, finger? Does the ball move? Does it change? Right there. Why else would the ring finger move like that? I don't know. Maybe it's going down, but I don't see the ball spin or move. But my point being that for a team that doesn't have a timeout, you get a free timeout. Yeah. So that's a disadvantage to the team that preserved their timeouts where you can call a play and get something instituted in there when normally you wouldn't have a chance because of it. However, you do want to get the call right. Oh, no, no. I'm just saying, but it's a catch-22 to doing that, you know? It has an adverse effect on the game, especially if you've used your timeouts. You now you get a chance to, to utilize this. Well, good news is both teams have two timeouts remaining. However, last night in that Marquette to Paul game, there was a call that both Gus and Raph thought would stay the way it was called, and it got reversed. So let's wait and see what happens here with James Breeding, Jeff Clark, and Tony Chiazza. Let's see if it first hits the rim. It does no. not. So that's right that the, that the shot clock does not reset. There's seven seconds right now. See, from that angle, it looked like Kyrie, and it didn't hit off from that angle right there. But the other one you talked about, did it hit his ring finger a little bit more closely? I don't think it did. It's supposed to be conclusive evidence. Yeah, it has to be to review what was, you know, called on the floor. Do we want to get into if it's a catch or not a catch right now? Well, luckily, I'm a Steeler fan, <laughs> so they changed the rule the way it's supposed to be. Nothing's been changed yet. Well, they are going to change the rule of what a catch is. You know, and I couldn't even be mad at that at that time. All right. See that? I still think it's off of Isaiah Jackson off that ring finger. I think it's Kyrie. I, I, don't, I don't think they have enough evidence to overturn it. It's a long delay right now, I can tell yeah. you that much. Because it's a tough decision to make, because you, from the different angles, you really can't tell if Jackson did hit it. Should there be a time limit on yes. how much, yes. on, on, on how long you need? Because if you need this much time, then it shouldn't be overturned. Yeah, it shouldn't be, because now it's not conclusive enough to do it. I mean, the Providence cheerleaders are getting a workout right now because they've been forced to jump the entire time. James Breeding going over to discuss, and it's going to be oh. the ball. I didn't think it. I didn't. I thought is that ring finger. I didn't think it hit the ring finger. You're right. Jeff Clark just came over and said the ring finger bent backwards. Smarty pants. <laughs> Isaiah Jackson was the last to touch it. You should have saw this look on, on Justin's <laughs> face over. He was so proud of that that he got that right. Here's Foster. Spin move. Foster gets Crick in the lane with a minute and a half to go. Well, the time delay didn't affect one person. That's Foster Foster because he went right to work on that possession. 16 points for Foster. Cartwright picked up by Foster. Shot clock down to eight. Lindsay for the lead. Weak side rebound. Jackson. Diallo will go to the free throw line trying to tie it up. The foul is on Mintz. That's going to be his fourth. I tell you, again, one on one defense. You bite, I spin, and I finish inside for Foster. But look how tight the spin is. Now that allows him to explode up over the top and finish. But a great call also tell, also too by McDermott to get an isolation in the middle of the court for your best score. Diallo, 72.5%. One of two at the line. Providence has missed eight free throws. So you want the opposite. The jinx. I'm just giving numbers. Yeah, I'm just saying. How about Jackson, though? Couple possessions. He's been active on the offensive boards to give the Pro give Providence an extra possession. Alpha Diallo a chance to tie this game up. He's got 12 points, 8 rebounds. One of two at the line. One point lead for the Blue Jays. Tyshawn Alexander will run the point. 
Kyron Cartwright just barks at his team. Get a stop. We need a stop. Hegner gives it back to Alexander. Shot clock at 10. Foster. He gets fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. The foul is against Jalen Lindsey. Third foul against Lindsey. The team's eighth foul. Marcus Foster, though, uncharacteristically, 0 for 3 at the free throw line. A 77.6% free throw shooter on the season. Big free throws right now. 0 for 4. I told you about percentages. A tough possession that time by Jalen Lindsay. You do everything right, get the shot clock down, and then once you reach in at the end, you commit that foul. Foster now to get unable to convert on the first one. Let's see if we can knock in the second. How much now is it mental? Able to get the second to make it a two-point game with 37.9. And Providence will call a timeout. They have one more left. 34.6 seconds to go, 27 seconds on the shot clock. Providence is in the double bonus. If they get fouled, they go to the free throw line. But at the free throw line, they're just 10 of 19. The bracket, the winner of this game, moves on to the semifinals to take on Xavier tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on FS1. Later on tonight, quarterfinals, three and four. Marquette against Villanova and Butler against Seton Hall. This game has been fantastic throughout. What is the play? Who do you go to in this situation right now if you're Ed Cooley? Well, Ed Cooley loves isolation plays, but he gets it off of swings, either via a pick and roll scenario with Cartwright in the middle of the lane where maybe Rodney Bullock pops back, but also they love to keep the ball in the center of the floor so that way they can attack and exploit any kind of mismatch they have. So look for something attacking the basket for Providence unless they're able to dribble, drive, and then able to kick out for an open shot. Well, the Big East tournament began last night. St. John's against Georgetown. Chris Mullen against Patrick Ewing. St. John's won that one. Then it was Marquette against DePaul. And Marquette was able to hang on. And then earlier today, Xavier just bum rushed. St. John's in the second half to move on in the semifinals. And here we are coming down the stretch in this one. Providence has gone cold from the field of the last three and a half minutes. They trail by two. Out of the timeout, what has Ed Cooley drawn up? In the hands of Kyron Cartwright. Cartwright against Alexander goes baseline, nearly loses it. Pull it to Diallo. Diallo comes up short, the rebound, gets it back, puts it back, Tommy! seconds to go. They got a timeout if they want it. McDermott says go, play. Foster loses the dribble. Foster puts it up for a goal to overtime. The first overtime of this 2018 Big East Tournament. Now how about Cartwright tight roping the baseline, able to regather without traveling, get it out to Bullock, and then Diallo now once, but second time it's a charm to get it in there. The tie the game, and I thought Foster just played with the ball too much instead of being assertive and make a move, and Diallo able to stay in front and not commit the foul. You got bonus. Can I ask you this question? Go ahead. He's one of five at the free throw line, Foster. 
does that creep into your mind at all as opposed to going to the hoop or pulling up for a well, jumper? I, I think it depends on the player. Yes, it does creep in. Uh, Marcus Foster is so good at creating body contact. I think he played with it a little bit more trying to create a jump shot instead of getting to the basket. The last time we had an overtime game in the Big East tournament, the 2015 quarterfinals, Xavier took down Butler. We've got another one here. Providence against Creighton. Overtime is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Doesn't get any better. What did I say before? Today's the best day of this tournament. You get four games. We've got overtime here in the 4-5 matchup. The winner moves on to take on the one seed, Xavier. Alpha Diallo. 14 points, 9 rebounds. Jalen Lindsay's got a double-double, 11 and 10. Marcus Foster, 17 points for the Blue Jays. But he just couldn't get a shot off as Greg McDermott let them go. And I understand why he let them go. He had the ball in the guy's hands who would want the ball in his hands. Well, what you do, if you call a timeout, you allow the defense to set. Uh, you put it in your best player's hand, the one that can create. That time, I thought... Marcus Foster again just played with a little bit too much, but how about give Providence a lot of credit? They pounded the offensive glass, 15 offensive boards for 12 second chance points, and that's what kind of got them back in the game and allowed them to get the tide off of that that hustle on the offensive glass. Jacob Epperson will jump center here against Jalen Lindsey here in overtime, and the tip is controlled by the Friars. Foul trouble. Bullock's got four for Providence. Davion Mintz has four for the Blue Jays. Justin Petra alongside Jim Jackson here on FS1. Diallo, nice move underneath, kept that pivot put down. And, you know, Ed Cooley is a lot like, and, and has a pro mentality almost like Chris Mullen. When he recognizes where a mismatch is at, he'll misdirect the play and bring it back to allow now Diallo to have one-on-one -on -one opportunity without defense is just set right in the way of his operating space. Epperson picks up the dribble, shot clock down to six. Foster, hesitation, Foster loses it. Here comes Cartwright. Into the corner, Lindsey for three. Bullock with the rebound. Another offensive rebound once again, but that's a good shot in transition. If now you're able to get these offensive rebounds for a second chance. Kick out, Jackson. Jackson has it blocked, the fifth of the game by Epperson. Thomas has been quiet offensively. Alexander to the hoop. He gets fouled by Cartwright, a late whistle, but a good call. The foul is against Kyron Cartwright, and two shots for Alexander. But first of all, good defense by Marcus Foster. You kind of corral him and make him go back into where Epperson is at. And again, the big fella able to block it. And then inside, Alexander was a push right in the back at the end on Cartwright, which caused the foul. Third foul against Cartwright. Alexander misses the free throw. A 72% free throw shooter. Free throws have not been kind to either team in this game. I told you. Sometimes the percentage can be misleading once you get down the stretch of the game when the pressure is on the line. You have to be able to step up there and knock in free throws. One point game under three and a half to go here in overtime. Going back to that mismatch. Diallo wants it against Ballack. Gets it blocked, but a foul against Ballack. I believe the foul is going to be with the body. And that's number four against Ballack. But right there, when, once Ballack came up out of the stance and switched a little bit, that gave the angle to Diallo because the help was in the middle with Epperson. The baseline was going to be open. And, Diallo smartly was just waiting for the right time so he could get to the baseline and exploit the weakness there. Diallo, two for four at the line, 16 points on the day. 
17 points. These teams met last year in the quarterfinals. Creighton won 70-58. And Diallo makes them both. 18 for Alpha Diallo. Three-point lead for the Friars. There's a mismatch down low. Epperson against Cartwright. He forced it. Kyrie Thomas somehow kept it alive. Shot clock never reset. Ballard to Foster along the baseline for the dunk. One point game. Having fun yet? <laughs> if you're not having fun, you're not enjoying college basketball. Shot clock down to seven. Bullock against Foster. It's knocked out of bounds with five on the shot clock. Keep your eye on the pass here. No panic from Creighton. Shot clock going down right in between two defenders again. Attention to detail. A. Jackson that time on the closeout. Not in his proper stance. He just gave the baseline up to Marcus Foster. He was able to explore it and finish. Three on the shot clock. Cartwright draws the foul. And he'll go to the free throw line. One second on the shot clock, and he draws the foul. We saw it at the end with Marcus Foster getting bailed out at the end of the shot clock. And excellent job of Car Kyron Cartwright jumping into Foster, creating the contact. I know you didn't like it, Marcus Foster, but smart play goes to Cartwright. Greg McDermott didn't like it either. Cartwright misses the free throw. I mean, this is the way it's gone. Both teams shooting under 60% from the free throw line. No offense, that's abysmal. Well, coaches always try to simulate in practice being tired in critical situations where you have to step up and knock in free throws. But it, it, it's nothing like game time experience in order to get comfortable with, with that field. Two point game. Foster has it stripped. Here comes Cartwright. Pulls up for the free throw line. Back rims it. Mitch with a rebound. If they push it, they got numbers. Alexander thought about a three, passed it up. Mitch. What do we have? A foul against Jalen Lindsay. Reach. And that's going to be the fourth against Lindsay. Uh, again, the, the reach in. 10. Yeah, the reach in right here by Lindsey Wright. There, on down, coming down. Other than that, you had Cartwright in, in perfect position to help. But it was the reach down that caused the foul. Maybe on Mitz will go to the line where he's two for three. He's got eight points, four rebounds, six assists. Teams in the double bonus. The foul trouble. Both teams each with two guys with four. Bullock and Lindsay for Providence. Davion Mintz and Mitch Ballard for the Blue Jays. And we're tied up at 64. And now Creighton asking for their fans to get up on their feet. Cartwright, he gets fouled by Thomas, and he'll go back to the free throw line for two. And one of the few mistakes you'll see from the defensive player of the year on the closeout, just, just watch on the closeout here. Right foot is up, he lunges at Cartwright. That's just an easy opportunity to create a foul. Cartwright knocks down the first. Kyron Cartwright now at 10 points. Toby Hanger comes back in. Tyshawn Alexander goes to the bench. Cartwright 10 points on three of eight from the floor. Just two assists. 
Makes them both. 132 to go here in overtime. Two point lead for Providence. Foster for three in the lead. No. Jackson with the one handed rebound. And Diallo says, I got it. Uh, that was an excellent play. Foster just leaning back a little bit. But how about the block out inside by Jackson? To just break in that rebound. The winner moves on to take on Xavier. Shot clock down to seven. Jackson against Hedner. And a foul against Hedner with five on the shot clock. So many late fouls by this Creighton team. Well, that's his recognition that time. Jackson knew that that sweep through would get him to the baseline. Hedner wouldn't be quick enough to recover. And she get a foul call. Jackson one of two at the line. A chance to make it a two possession game unless you have that foul on the three point attempt. The Friars trying to pick up their 20th win of the season. Makes them both four point lead. Mintz wants a timeout. And the clock kept on going. They'll have to go back to review that to make sure they put some time on the clock. We are back here at Madison Square Garden. The time on our board says 52.9 seconds. The time on the clock says 54.8 because this is where the timeout took place. And you saw the time on the clock. It kept on going. The officials went back to the monitor. And so right now on the scoreboard, it is 54.8 seconds. Our game reset. Both teams with two timeouts. Both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow in favor of Creighton. But it is a four-point lead for Providence. As these, as these teams split the season series, each team winning on their home floor. Marcus Foster has 19, Davion Mintz 10, Mitch Ballack 12. Those are the three and double figures for the Blue Jays. Well, you know, customarily when a guy's taking the ball out of bounds, a lot of times the play is going to be ran for him at some point. To be able to come back off a double screen or get back into some kind of action. Now, again, you got 29 seconds on the shot clock. You don't have to go quick and look for Marcus Foster, of course, to be involved in this play. Good job by Diallo switching off on Kyrie Thomas. Mintz, his pull up shot. Oh, big time shot by Davion Mintz. Well, how about the play and the confidence to have Mintz on the weak, on the strong side? Go one on one and clear it for him. And now you don't have to foul if you're the Blue Jays. One possession game. If they make a stop, watch out. Bullock against Thomas. Here's Jackson now against Hegner. Shot clock at 10. Jackson goes down. Shot clock down to seven. Cartwright against Foster. Cartwright, the spin, hanging. Oh! Seconds the foul is called against Cartwright. Wow. You talk about staying under control. We talked about the spin cycle earlier. He put one more on display on Marcus Foster, able to fade away and create space. But here, stop on the dime, spin. Clutch basket that time by Kyron Cartwright. So now, if Mintz can make both to make it a two point game. And you're quick, and you could foul where the foul shooting has been an issue for Providence. And Mintz makes the first. Davion Mintz 
has had himself a ball game, has come through clutch, 13 points now. Yeah, and if you're Providence, you want to catch this ball off of the baseline. You don't want to get deep in the corner because now that baseline is not your friend. You can step out of bounds. So it's important that whoever is taking it out recognizes that. Guys got to get open. Timeout taken by the Blue Jays. 12 seconds to go. And so you know that Greg McDermott is thinking, okay, maybe an initial steal. If not, you got to foul quickly. Yep, and now Providence, you have two 30-second timeout. The guy who's taking the ball out of bounds has to be able to have a clock in his head. And again, big time players don't like the big time moments. And Kyron Kyright didn't panic that the shot clock was going down. He wanted to get to a spot inside the lane. And that's what he was able to do with the spin move. One timeout remaining for the Blue Jays, two for the Friars. 12 seconds to go. As far as free throws are concerned, foul trouble for the Blue Jays. You got to imagine that Mintz and Ballack will be out. Nope, Mintz is on the floor, yeah. as is Ballack at this time, I guess, because you're going for the steal. Yep. But I'm surprised that he has them in just because. If you go for the steal, you miss. One of them may have to foul. Right. And that takes a shooter, especially if you're Malik off the court, and a ball handler if it's Mintz. Watch out for the home run pass, too. You got to be careful here. Jackson to inbound to Cartwright. They try to trap him. Now you got a foul. There is the foul by Mintz, and that for Mintz is going to be number five. Well, I, I like it from this perspective. You had 12 seconds left. See if you can get a steal real quick. If you don't get it, you still give yourself some time. I'm an advocate sometimes that players assume that you're going to foul. And either they get a five-second call or they hold the ball and turn it over. It didn't work that time, but still only, you know, three and a half seconds came off the clock, almost four. So Mintz has fouled out with 14 points, six assists, four rebounds. Was a clutch six of seven from... The free throw line. He had himself a really good game. Tyshawn Alexander has come in for him. Alpha Diallo is at the free throw line where he's four of six. In overtime, Providence is seven of eight. They have made five in a row. The door is still open. Toby Hedner comes in for Harrell. You can see Tyshawn Alexander yelling, box out, box out. Three-point game, 8.8, .8 and a timeout taken immediately here by Greg McDermott. So here's the question. 71-68. Three-point game with 8.8 .8 to go. You know Greg McDermott's drawing up a play. Is he drawing up two plays? Because is he expecting Providence to foul under five seconds and then something else? Uh, he's probably drawing the play to get a three-point shot because keep in mind, if you haven't done it in the past, that's not your history to do it. And for the defensive coach, you got to keep in mind, this is something you have to practice. Fouling and knowing how to foul and when to foul. You just can't institute it in the game time situation because you can't trust that your players would do it properly, okay? And when they do it. That's something you have to practice and hone in just like you're doing an offensive play. So if you don't do it in practice, you can't do it in the game. So I'm sure McDermott is drawing up a play to try to get a three-point shot. The Blue Jays now are out of timeouts. Alpha Diallo, the sophomore, seven straight games in double figures. As he's gone for 19 and 9. Well, Remember, he had the, the shot at the towards the end of regulation to force overtime. He's just been active. And sometimes when you're active, you just hang around, you get offensive rebounds, you get layups, and now you feel good about yourself. Start knocking down jump shots. He's been influential on the defensive end. So all around game, and of course, you know, you want to compliment that with a W. But this Creighton team, Coach McDermott is very good at drawing up plays to get high-quality shots. 
What you can't do is allow Creighton to have momentum coming at you where it puts you at a disadvantage when you give up a shot. And now a timeout is taken by Ed Cooley once he saw who the Blue Jays had on the floor. Now Creighton is 6 of 22 from three-point land, which is not exactly Creighton-like because they typically shoot it at 38% from three-point land. If I'm Ed Cooley, this, this is what I want. I want the opposing team, whoever catches the ball, I want him to catch it with his back to his basket. So he has to turn, face, and now dribble, maybe turn him a couple of times. Because once you get a straight line drive and the ability to beat your man, now somebody has to help. But I'm giving up the two-point shot. I'm staying at home on the two on the three-point shooter. So if you got a straight line drive and you're going for two, have at it. I'm not going to give you a three-point shot. And if you're going to go to the hoop, and if you're Providence, do not commit the foul. Get out the way. I mean, because if nothing else, you run some time off the clock. Again, you got to get the ball in bounds, and now you, you get a chance to get back to the free throw line on the foul. Hegner to inbound to Thomas. Here comes Kyrie Thomas. Ballot for three. Short. Providence gets the rebound. A foul is given with two tenths of a second. They got the open look. You can't ask for anything more. This is a play last night that DePaul ran for Matt Struess. A switch was supposed to happen, but it didn't. You know why? Lack of communication. I don't care if they come together or not, okay? Jalen Lindsay is supposed to call that switch and go out to his man. That time, Ballard just a little short on that jump shot, but the play was there. My That's goodness. a great reaction by Greg McDermott because he knew, hey, you know what? We did what we wanted to do. And it was as close as could be expected. Just like last night's game, let's make sure they get the clock right. The foul is Game given. Being it's going to be reset to 0 0.5 seconds, which is enough time for a catch and shoot, not a just a tip. But Isaiah Jackson, if I'm him right now, I purposely missed the second one. Yeah, and I look back at that replay with Jalen Lindsey being on the bottom side. Yeah, he should have stayed at home. Well, he makes it anyway. And that will do it. Providence wins it in overtime, 72-68, to move on to the semifinals to take on Xavier, who they beat earlier this year on January 6th, back at the dunk, 81-72. What a game this was in the 4-5 matchup. Mutual respect between the coaches, mutual respect between the players. The updated bracket looks like this. It'll be Xavier, the one seed, against Providence, the five seed, tomorrow in the semifinals at 6.30 p.m. Eastern That's time. Pleasure. Tonight, nice, nice to meet you. Tonight we've got Marquette against Villanova at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Butler against Seton Hall coming up after that one. Ed Cooley and his team survive and advance. Another handshake with Greg McDermott. This one was a good one. 72-68, the Friars win it. Happy belated birthday to our producer, Fran Morrison. Coming up tonight, it's a 2018 Big East tournament. Continues with two more quarterfinal games. Let's go over right now to Rob Stone. All right, Coach Cooley, up three, 8.8 .8 left. Creighton calls a timeout. You see what they set up, and you call a timeout. What was the defensive posture that you had in plan for that? Well, you know, I mean, they got a wide open shot. We didn't communicate. We wanted to switch all screens. We wanted to switch up to take away the three and almost didn't want to switch under because if they got a two, you still got a one-point lead. Uh, that was a tough game for us. We played a great team. We, you know, we had to fight the win, and uh, I'm proud of the group and their resiliency. We didn't use many guys in the second half, but I thought we were, uh, we were complete today as far as winning the game. I saw you coming out of the locker room after half. I asked you about Kyron Cartwright. You said, man, he's hurt, and he's still back in the locker room. Well, he played the entire second half, played all of overtime. What did you see from Cartwright after that injury? I thought we had great leadership from Cartwright, Bullock, and Lindsey. 
I thought the mismatch with Diallo was really big for us. I thought everybody that played made timely shots, in particular Kyron's layup in there that put us up four that, you know, basically sealed the game. Coach, we'll see you tomorrow night. Semifinals with Xavier, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thank Justin. You. Rob, thank you very much. Wow. But what a game it was. Ed Cooley moving on. 72-68 for Jim Jackson. And all of us here at FS1, I'm Justin Kutcher wishing you a good afternoon. Don't forget tonight, more Big East Tournament. But right now, it's Speak for Yourself.